Good afternoon and good evening and good morning for those who live in Asia. Uh, today our topic continue about where Allah He said, I am God, worship me. And as always, we began with the peace of Christ for all of you. And may the Lord open the eyes of those who they are listening so they might understand. Uh, yesterday, we asked the same question. And I want to show you how Muslims answer my questions. Which is really proven to me again and again that Muslims, they don't want to listen to the question, first of all, before they answer it. This is a nation who don't listen. They are copy-paste. Nobody want to listen to the question and they have an answer before you ask the question. This is happened only in Islam. Let me show you some examples. <clears throat> uh, let us make the text a little big. Oh, the text disappeared now. All right, let us see. This guy, <clears throat> his name Armin Muradi, <clears throat> he said, Quran chapter 21, verse number 25, and we send not before you any messenger except that we reveal to him there is no deity except me, so worship me. <laughs> My friend, this is what Muhammad said, that a guy, his name is Jibreel, said that Allah, he said, my question is, where Allah, he said, I am God, worship me. What is the proof that Allah is the one who said that? Muhammad, he confessed and he agreed and he admit that he received this from a guy who hugged him three times, who squeezed him three times, and he told him, read, read in the name of your Lord. Who is this guy? And then if we study more, we will find that this guy, his name is Dahiel Kelbi, and he is the boyfriend of Muhammad. And look, they are giving me more and more verses that Allah, he said, I am God, worship me. My friend, <clears throat> if we go to your Islamic website, what we will see, you want to see? Read with me. <clears throat> This is was at the age of 40, Muhammad became a prophet. First revelation. Angel Jibreel appeared to him and said, Breathe. But what the one who appeared to Muhammad was a man. What made him an angel? We do not know. But as Muhammad was illiterate, having never received any instruction in reading or writing, he said to the angel, I am not a reader. The angel looked at him, hold him, and it squeezed him. I mean, you why Muslims you upset from me when I say that the, the angel squeezed Muhammad? Here we go. It's you who says it squeezed him. Is it me who say the word squeezed him? So the angel he squeezed. <clears throat> Uh, 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 tabari, Tabari, don't use those texts in that in Arabic. You know, this is not not right. What you are writing in Arabic that Yasuah Yasuah Allah. No, we don't believe that Yasuah Allah. Allah is a fake God, does not exist. Yeshua is not Allah. Don't say that in Arabic. That is totally false. Yeshua is not Allah. It's not an honor to be Allah, the moon God. You are insulting Jesus, dear. I know you will say to me that the Arabic Christian, they translated the word God or etc. to uh, they have it in the Arabic translation. This is false too. Those people, they are under the occupation of the Arab Muslims for 1400 years and they forced them to do that. And now it became kind of tradition, stupid tradition. But this is absolutely false. Don't insult Jesus. Jesus is not Allah, and he will never be. <clears throat> uh, 
So look with me here. This is additional proof that there is no way that this guy is an angel or even exist. The reason for this, look what this Abdul, he said. He said that the prophet, he never knows how to read. He never received any instruction in reading or writing. So how do you explain to me the stupidity of the angel by saying to him, after he Muhammad explained, he said to him, uh, I am not a reader. The smart angel, he squeezed him again. Read. As much as he could bear. I mean, what the point of this squeezing to the point that guy almost died? Any Muslim is in the bushes? Why this guy is squeezing the other guy saying to him, read? I mean, have you ever heard that, okay, the guy, he never received instructions in reading and writing, and now by squeezing, you think he is going to read or write? And then Muhammad, he said to him again, read. And the prophet, he said to him, to this idiot, I am not a reader. Hello, I told you. What's wrong with you? The angel sized him, sized the prophet, and squeezed him and said, Read in the name of your Lord. By the way, he did not tell the whole story. This has happened three times. And read in the name of your Lord. Okay, do Muhammad know how to read now after after Muhammad after being squeezed? How he just said to him, I cannot read, and then he says to him, Read in the name of your Lord. That is a proof that Muhammad is a false prophet and this guy is never exist and there is no angel and there is no Allah. Because if Allah is a true God and he said to a donkey, not to a Muhammad, read, the donkey will read. Is that correct? If Allah is a true God, <clears throat> this should be the first miracle he do to Muhammad. Muhammad did not know how to read. Allah, he told him, read. Then Muhammad should read. There is no need for a squeezing and mayonnaise never come out. Jesus, he said to the man, he cannot walk, carry your bed and go. The man, he carry his bed and go. That's it. That's it. That is Jesus. No squeezing. No mayonnaise. And then if we study Islamic books, we will find the following. This is your Islamic islamweb.net. This is fatwa. Please read with me, Abdul. Number 37009. Is the text in Arabic clear? The title of the fatwa Maji'u Jibreel fi surati Dahya al-Kalbi the coming of Gabriel or Jibreel in the, the Islamic name in the image and the look and the shape of a guy his name Dahya al-Kalbi su'al which means a question هناك حديث لعائشة رضي الله عنها لم أجد له دليلة فما مدى صحته a guy is asking, there's a question from Aisha. I did not find a, a proof of it. So what? How, how truthful it is. And he says, Aisha, she said to the Prophet, Allah pray on him and salute him, when he was standing with the man. Ya Rasulullah, ma balaka tutilu al-wuqufa ma dahiya al-kalbi. Oh, Messenger of Allah, why you stand and you stay along with dahiya al-kalbi? And وَمَا بَالَكَ تَأْذَنَّهُ فِي كُلِّ الْأَوْقَاتِ And why he, come to you, he can come to your place anytime? Anytime! I mean, Aisha, she noticed something weird. This guy, the Hilkalbi, who is the most handsome man in Quraysh, he come anytime to Muhammad. Anytime, anytime. Even his wives cannot do that. And you don't, you will never say no to him. وَلَا تَحْجُبُهُ and you never say no to him in any time, in any way to come to you. Never.
and look what the scholars they said <clears throat> uh, for sure the story here is long we can read all the scholar is answering now you see here it says in red this is an ijaba the answer <clears throat> all right this is a hadith according to marawahu nisa'i nisa'i according to a nisa'i fi, you know like the, the one who reported it or reported and it was in his sunan and it was marfu'a وَإِنَّهُ لِجِبْرِيلُ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامَ نَزَلَ فِي صُرَحِ لِدَحِ الْكَلْبِ فَقَالَ الْأَلَبَانِي صحيح. So this hadith according to Al-Alabani Sahih And then the shaykh he continued answering he said And it's mentioned in Al-Tabarani في الكبير والأوسط From Anas That Rasulullah he said That Jibreel used to come to me in the image of the Kalbi. same is reported in Ahmad and he continues saying and Jibreel used to come to him in the image of Dahya Isnaduhu Sahih Sahih so all Islamic reference prove to us that there is a guy he live in Mecca is very well known he is the first one who raped Sophia he is a normal man he is not an angel he is a handsome man good looking he is the most good looking man in Quraysh he come to Muhammad anytime he wish anytime he want and never say ever 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 no to him and Muhammad he claim that this guy is the hell Kalbi he is an angel So where is Allah the one who spoke to Muhammad? Obviously, it is a boyfriend. Muhammad, when I explain why this guy, he come to him anytime, obviously they are sleeping together. Even Aisha, she noticed that. So what he will say, he said, this is Dahil Kalbi. So what is the, pro <laughs> the proof that Muhammad, he was seeing an angel? Nothing. He was seeing a guy. His name is Dahil Kalbi. Do you Muslims have a proof that Muhammad was seeing an angel? According to your religion, which is a cult, Muhammad never saw Allah, never spoke to Allah, never heard Allah, never heard the sneezing of Allah or the fart of Allah. So how Allah, he said to Muhammad, all oh, this Quran verses you are giving me, this is a fabrication. According to the Islamic religion, <clears throat> Allah spoke to Adam. Allah spoke to Alexander the Great. Allah spoke to Musa. Allah spoke to Isa. Allah spoke to everybody. But he didn't want to speak with Muhammad. What is the problem? Hmm? So when we say to you, show us where Allah, he said, I am God, worship me. I'm talking Allah saying that, not a guy the boyfriend of Muhammad and Muhammad making an a stories that he is Jibreel and he come to me anytime let me tell you <clears throat> why the story of Jibreel or Jibreel to be uh, to be a uh, Dahi Al-Kalbi imagine <clears throat> imagine my friend Jibreel, he come to Muhammad in the image of a Trump. So now people will be confused when Trump, he go in TV. Is that Jibreel or this is the Trump? Who is talking? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Do you understand me, Abdul? Who is talking? What the point that Allah he sent Jibreel in the image of a guy his name is a Trump? I mean the Hir Kalbi. That is the most stupid thing ever I heard. Hey, uh, President, are you now? Are you Trump now, or you are Jibreel? Uh, today I'm Jibreel. I'm Jibreel today, and we are going to create more jobs. Hey, Angel Jibreel. 
so what you will do with the borders of Mexico? We are going to send the troops. And CNN will go that Jibril appeared today in TV, the, the one who used to come to the Prophet Muhammad, and he told us he would do this. What the point that Allah, I mean, Jibreel, he chose the image of a man, I understand. But he come in the image of a guy, his name is Dahil Kalbi, he is the boyfriend of Muhammad. This is very, 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 not only fishy, it's obvious. And I challenge anyone to tell me what the point of this. And then Muhammad, he said to Aisha, Aisha, this is not Dahil Kalbi, this is Jibreel. What? Muhammad, he said to Aisha, Aisha, this is not Jibreel? <clears throat> Look what, is, what Aisha said, she said, guys. It's very important. The guy, he said here, فعائشة تستغرب حتى أبو بكر عندما يأتي ويستأذي من المكان. Even, even Abu Bakr, Aisha, she said to him, even, or in the question, even Abu Bakr, who is one of the most important figures in Islam, when he come to Muhammad, sometime Muhammad, he say, I cannot see you. Maybe he's having sex or busy or something. And he let him go without seeing him. But he never, ever let Dahyal Kalbi go back home without seeing him. And she said to him, how come Abu Bakr, which is her father, he come and go, and you you don't let him see you sometime? But the hell can be he can you he can enter upon you anytime he wish. And he says, النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نساءه. He stay he stay. This guy he stay with Muhammad more than Muhammad stay with his wives. So. So why you open your door for him anytime at the night? Or at the day, listen carefully. Any time at the night, any time at the day. Remember, in the old days, people they used to sleep early. I mean, like by six o'clock, as long as the sun set, you know, the sunset is night for them. That's it. There's no electricity. There's no radio. There's no TV. There's nothing. You know. So uh, uh, usually, the only entertainment they have at that time is uh, sex and the, uh, you know, the prophet. He have the hill kalbi to come to him anytime. Never happened that he said to him, no, I am busy. At night or daytime, and Aisha is the one saying that. And she said to him, additional, look. وَمَا أَرَاكَ قَطْ عَبَسْتَ فِي وَجْهِ And I never saw you ever being not smiling in his face. Always he is happy with him. The second Muhammad, he stand with Dahil Kalbi, he is so fluffy happy. It's, it, this is love. Baby, I love you. I love you. No more. This is love. Can You can tell. Muhammad never, never, never unhappy when he is with Dahil Kalbi. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. So Muhammad now is answering Aisha about her question. Why all of this happening with this guy, Dahil Kalbi? Look what he said. أَوَرَ أَيْتِهِ Did you see him? She said, you? Yeah. So Muhammad, he thought nobody is noticing. <laughs> she said, yeah, yes, a messenger of Allah. Hmm? But today, I saw something strange from him. He said, Aisha? And what is that? She said, Today he was wearing white clothes and white, uh, like uh, head cover and white sandals. And I never saw the hell can be wearing this before. The Prophet said, Good news, Aisha. This is, this is Jibreel. He was telling me by the by, by the knowledge of my Allah or what Allah told him, huh? But 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 Aisha she said, but no, this is Dahya. This is Dahya. <laughs> the one I saw is Dahya. What are you talking about? He said, yes, yes. 
it is Jibreel. He come to me fi in the image of one of the human, which is Dahya. And then Aisha, she said, and since then, uh, Dahya, he have a special place for us, which means the wives. So now, what we learn from this, that Aisha, she saw Dahya wearing white dress, white sandal, white head cover. Hold on, but Arab always wear white. Go right now and check what they wear in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, in Bahrain, in Qatar. This is normal clothes. Aisha, she is seeing this man always coming to Muhammad, but today is wearing white. So it's the same man, same man who always come to Muhammad, and Muhammad never say to him no. In the day, in the night, afternoon, middle of the night, and it says here in the story that he stay with Muhammad more than Muhammad stay with his wives. So the question is, where Muhammad got this story from? The answer is, not from anybody. Muhammad never met an angel. Muhammad met his boyfriend. And his boyfriend, his name is Dahil Kalbi. And this is all documented, as you see in the front of your eyes, by you Muslims. You know, one of the funny things and the beautiful things about Islam and Muslims, they say to us those stories are fabricated, Baghdad. But as you see, in the scholar page, they say this is Sahih. It is Sahih. Sahih, brother. Sahih. And what is make it, making it more funny, when a Muslim, he says to me, that those hadith are fabricated about the Prophet. The question is, this hadith is written by Muslims, reported by Muslims, approved by Muslims for the last 1400 years. Suddenly, in a magical way, it is not sahih no more. It is not correct. So we repeat the question again where Allah he said I am God worship me when Muhammad never spoke to Allah never heard of Allah never see the face or the back of Allah never heard anything about Allah and just to make it more clear, when Muhammad, he confirmed that Allah, the all-knowing, come to me in the image of Dahi al-Kalbi, as you see in the front of your eyes. Read it. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih. Do you see it? I do not know him more than any more man, man among you. That was the real beast upon, be upon him who came down in the form of Dahi al Kalbi. Man, 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 man. I wish, I wish, I wish that Angel Jibreel, he came in the image of a Trump. Trump, he said to the Muslims, send all your money to USA. All the Muslims will send their money. Because this is Jibreel. Jibreel alayhi salam brother and Trump he can say to them I am Jibreel obviously and Allah told me Allah told me you sent all your money to USA but this is what Islam is based on 
a stupid story about a guy he met a guy the other guy squeezed the first guy the first guy he said to him read the second guy he said to him i cannot read the other guy he said to the first guy why you cannot read you idiot i squeezed you read and he squeezed him again and he said to him i cannot read he squeezed him again and he said i cannot read and he squeezed him again and i cannot read and after all the squeezing until now muhammad still cannot read yes my skype is on my friend any muslim would like to call me feel free <coughs> I'm waiting so when the Muslim they start quoting for me what it's called verses from the Quran saying that uh, the Quran saying the Quran saying Allah said worship me my friend the Quran according to you Muslims is something given to Muhammad by a guy his name is Dahil Kalbi Muhammad claim that Dahil Kalbi is a guy his name is Jibreel So look what we have here. We have a guy, his name is Muhammad. He meet a guy, his name is Dahya. And he and Dahya, he claimed to be Jibreel. And Jibreel, he claimed to be coming from Allah. So Muhammad, Muhammad, he said that Dahya said that Jibreel said that Allah said, worship me. So where is the answer for my question that Allah said? I don't see anyone saying Allah said. I see a guy, his name is Dahya. By the way, guys, if you go home and suddenly Jibreel appear to you in the image of a Christian prince and scare the hell off you, I apologize. God did not make me handsome. I'm sorry. Imagine, imagine, God God forbid, you close your eyes and you open them and you see uh, Jibreel coming to you in the image of a Christian prince. The first thing will happen to you, if you are a male, you will have a gray hair in two seconds. All right, let us see. <clears throat> hello? Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. How are you, Abdul? I'm fine. Is that Christian prince? Yes, you are live on air. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, all right. Uh, I've been following for a while now. All right. Maybe, maybe two, maybe two years or less. I, um, but uh, actually, I just called you for an inf for an impo important information. Yeah, this is my name is uh, Bedu Kwame from Belgium. All right. Yeah, <clears throat> but I, actually, I was a Muslim. I am not a Muslim anymore. Oh, okay. So my, yes. I feel sorry for you. You will not have versions no more. <laughs> no, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm not gonna have. Um, let me let me try to convince you to come back to Islam, my friend. The first thing, if you come back to Islam right now, I promise you that Jibril will talk to Allah and he will increase the size of your penis extra. Excuse Gracious. my language, but this is what the Prophet he said. I mean, you will have an extra size of a penis is going to be endless. I mean. Why you want to waste such an opportunity and not to be a Muslim? Mamma mia. Mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I will see. I will, I, will, I will read again the book and see if I, I don't, but I don't think I'm going to go back again. Mm, okay. Done. Look yes. like I have a failure today. I could not convince this guy. I'm not convincing today. All right. But actually, actually, the reason why I'm calling you, I don't know if I was, I don't know if you know the lady called Sandra Solomon. No, I do not know. In Canada. No, not really. She's one um, Arab lady who is really putting pepper in the Muslim's eye also in Canada. She's trying very well. She's an Arab girl from Saudi Arabia. I think she's from Palestine or somewhere, but she she stayed in Saudi Arabia and she came now to Canada mm. and she's really doing well. And uh, yesterday I was online with her and I proposed to her uh, I talked. I, I talked about you to her, and mm. I said, "Why can't you sit together with Christian Prince and see what you can do?" She she was really happy about it, and she replied to me straightforward. She said, "I will be very happy to sit with him if you can give me his his correspond his uh, his address." And unfortunately, I don't know how I can get in touch. I do not. I, know, I do not know my address too. The only way you can do that if you give her my yeah. Skype, she can call me. In the Skype. All right. I'll try to contact her right this evening. 
and let her know. But I think if you go on YouTube, you just type Sandra Solomon, mm -hmm. you will also see what she's doing. She's very, she's also trying, just like you're doing. All right, wonderful. But she yeah, have, that's do why she, I call she, you. Um, does she have a good knowledge? Oh, yeah, very well. In, in Arabic, oh, she's so, because I told I was a Muslim. I'm born a Muslim. My entire family, I'm the only one in my community this, who is out of the religion today. So I, I am really going through hell, but I, I understand what it is. They don't, they, they are very ignorant, that is why. But uh, in my family, we were all Muslims from over 200 years of religion, you know, so you understand my my, my position. So I've been following you all the time and then trying to read, try to convince. I have been... Uh, uh, my 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 family all renounced me. They said they didn't like me anymore in my, in my family. I don't, I don't like you too, to be honest with you. I'm just just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Listen, why why my friend? But why you decide to leave Islam? Why you yourself? Why you decide to leave Islam? Well, I decided to leave Islam because maybe I am a critical. I I, I am a critical thinker. Hmm. Uh, I am an African, actually. When I was in Africa, I used to be a teacher. I So w when I was in my community as a teacher, I was the only Muslim. The rest are Christians. Okay. And we always debate. We like debating all the time. And I like referring them to Ahmadidat, mm -hmm. referring them to books <laughs> that I, I like reading. And... And I decided one day, let me just go into Christianity very well to be able to debate them. So, well, once I was reading and I realized, well, there is a situation here. Everything about Islam has somehow, it's, it's just like a cop, the French people call it copy coli. It's like, a, they, they just pasted everything. So... Yeah. I started thinking further and further and further and saying, well, I don't think this is... I, first of all, let me say something. I, I, the, the reason why I decided to start thinking is when I read in the Quran and they said, and Muhammad said, I came, Allah said, if I'm able... Oh, how how do I put it? He can divide if if I am uh, if I can, I could make the, the the community the whole world as one community. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. Make it, yeah. Shah Allah, yeah. yeah. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, well, then we are because as as an African, I you see me, you see an African. When you see a Chinese, you see a Chinese. When you see an Arab, you see. When you see a European, you see an European. So why, why will God decide to make separators and at the same time, if I'm praying, I pray in Arabic language and I don't understand the meaning of that language. So these are all the questions that I started asking myself and I decided to go deeper into those questions. And finally I said, well, in fact, it's a long story. I'm just trying to summarize it here and make it short. There are so many questions I, I really put into my, my, my mind with regard to that religion, and I decided finally I can take it. It took me almost 20 years studying it. I'm, I'm not really prepared to talk about it today. That's why I'm really... Do, so do you know the story? Do you know the story how, uh, uh, how Allah created the black people? Well, that, just like I said... Uh, if you do not uh, know it, I will, I, will, I will share it with you. According to, to Muhammad, that yes. Allah, <clears throat> when he created Adam, and this is the hadith, I will put him in the front of, of everybody. When he created yeah. Adam, after that, he yes. hit the shoulder of Adam and, yeah. and the, the left shoulder of Adam, and the, from that left shoulder, all the black people came like circle. Yes, and then he hit the right shoulder of Adam, and all the white people came like uh, white, like white ants. <laughs> and then he said that the 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 black the black the the one from the left shoulder, which means the black, they will go to hell, and I don't care. And the one from the right shoulder, they go to heaven, and I don't care. Well, 
and the story in front of us I don't I I challenge anyone to say to me that I am making things up well I believe you because I have read somehow I read a lot of books and I've seen something similar to what you just said to me and uh, these are also th things that really encourage me in going going further into reading the books I've read a lot of Hadith, the Ibn Kathir, I've read the Ibn Taymiyyah, I've read, I, I've been going through all the, and finally I decided to put even those books and then just concentrate on the Quran because they always say, well, this book, uh, somehow they are not authentic, these are these. So I finally decided to go into the Quran alone and then see how I can really face my, my brethren because I, I really have to face them. I'm telling you right now where I'm seated, I am the only one among my own community. And if I'm telling you this, you really wouldn't understand until you see what I'm going through. But because I am very, very calm, I'm very, very sure about my position. I, I, that's why, that is just what is keeping me going today because I know what I'm doing. It's like, it's, and, and, and I have, as, as far as I'm concerned, I am more, how can I, I am proud of where I am coming from now. And uh, I know, I, uh, when, when, the other day I was talking to my, one of my friends and I was saying, do you know about uh, Waraka bin Nawful? Have you read about the Waraka bin Nawful? He said, who is Waraka bin Nawful? And this man speaks very well Arabic. He speaks very good Arabic. But he doesn't know even who Waraka Ibn Nawfal is. I said, go and search for Waraka Ibn Nawfal. Go and search, go and search for uh, Zainab bint Jahash. Go and search for uh, Zaid, uh, the, the adopted child of uh, Muhammad, because I, I don't call him Prophet Muhammad. I call him just Muhammad. Go and search for all those informations. Critically think about those things. Don't passionate, Don't read the Quran with passion, but read it while you want to to get something from it. Then you will know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, well, he just looked at me and just just left. And since then, I, he never called me again. I, I don't know. That is that is what I'm going through. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope some of them will understand that it is, it is. But thanks to you, really, you've helped me a lot because I've, I have about two... 2,000 gigabytes, and I think I have, because you say we can download your your your, your, your videos too, sure, so sure, I, yeah. I, will, I will confess that I have downloaded a lot, That's good. just because I want people to see what I'm doing. So I'm really studying you until yesterday when uh, Sandra Solomon said I, I, sh I should try to connect you with her, and I said, well, I have to call you today and then let you know about what I've done. So no I'm problem. very, very grateful for you, and uh, and uh, I hope uh, God will bless you. Yeah, just uh, ask her please to uh, contact me in Skype, and just okay. to tell me to tell me when I can text who is she, so I will know for sure that I accept her message. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I will she be happy very, to talk to her. No problem. She, she is very, very good. I That's good. I followed her, and the, 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 what makes me what makes me feel good about her is. She always liked to speak in Arabic first before she tra translates into English to them. And she make reference of Quran because she was born as a Muslim. So she always make reference to Hadith, to some ayah in the Quran, and then she make, she, 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 well, she has been going to the mosque. She went to the America, to the mosque, knocking at the mosque's door to, 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 to let the imams come out and debate her. But nobody's coming out. That's why I'm saying she is good. Yeah, so I think when wonderful. you sit with her, really, you can share a lot of ideas. All right. Well, let her just yeah. let her call me, my friend, and I'm happy for you that you left Islam. I have just one question for you. Okay. Are you now a Christian or not yet? Uh, not yet. I'm still searching. Okay. But, uh, Do you have any question for me? Like one, what, there is one what is thing making I you hesitate? To... Pardon me? What, what, what is making you hesitate to accept the Messiah as your Savior? Uh, what makes me hesitate? It's a good question. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I say to myself, God doesn't talk. God doesn't talk. 
God has already spoken to us when he created us. That's, that's my, my view of the, world, the universe. When the Muslims say fitra, that is uh, what they, they call the, the, the natural instinct, that uh, I think they have hijacked what we, what we call the natural instinct. And I define natural instinct as the words of God. I am hungry. You feel it. So that is the words of God. I am going to the toilet or I am going to... That, these are all messages of God that are, that, that are inmates in, in us. So God doesn't... That is me, but I see, I'm still searching. All right. So well, if, you have, see, if, you, if, you, if there is anything you want to know, like if there is something, uh, uh, you, you have a question, feel free to call me. I will uh, do that. And I will be happy to answer you. However, right. the Muslims do not have something called fitra. You see, the fitra, uh, yes. you, you said it is the instant, right? So that's right. Uh, but but Muslims don't go by that. But they they say they claim that they go by the fitra, which is yes. the, your instinct. But the fact they go by Muhammad, because does 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 your instinct say to you, you kill somebody and you jump upside down saying takbir? No, no. See, this is not fitra. Uh, that your that's instinct true. says to you. That you pray for the death of others and that will make you satisfied? No. So no. Muslims don't go by fitra. They claim that they go by the instant, but the fact they go by what Muhammad said letter by letter. Otherwise, well, they are not Muslim no more. You are right. So they fool themselves, they claim that we are following what God created within us. God did not create within you an a, a criminal. When when Muhammad he told them in the Quran that when you kill somebody, yeah. you did not kill. It was Allah who killed. Is that the fitra? No. There's, that nobody, is not the fitra. Uh, there's nobody believe that when he kills somebody, it is God who killed that body. That is That's the right. devil idea to make you believe that you have no guilt. Kill more. Don't worry about how many you kill. If you go to chapter 8, verse number 17, which is yes. it's a chapter of death and killing, you will see the Quran confirm saying to the Muslims, it is not you who slew them. But Allah, He does. Read it. It is not Whoa. you, ye, who slew them. It was I'm Allah. Chapter, yes. chapter, chapter, chapter. Uh, what chapter writing. you mean? Uh, chapter eight, verse number seventeen. Al Anfal. This is a chapter of death. All of all of it is about killing, uh, killing others. The most ugly chapter in the Quran. Yes, gracious God, Mama Mia. It's uh, and then uh, and then also they said they made the world because of muhammad and they, they are even singing that song in our language in uh, in africa they say they make the do they make the dunya because of muhammad they make the la lahira because of muhammad and they make uh, all is because of him so i i really think he's just a human being like us and uh there are i, I don't understand and i i finally say why are people so dumb not to understand that this is just fake? But uh, maybe I am so, I don't know. My friend, my friend, any yes. religion make you believe that killing others is God killing them is evil. Because if that's God want to kill those people, why he don't do it himself? Yes, that's a good question. Why God? He is the one who created me, but yet he need a little Abdul. He is 5.2 centimeter, whatever. He go and do jihad. He kill himself. He killed the others. Uh, widows, children, they became orphaned. Kayas, bloodshed. What is that for? If Allah don't want those people, what about send tsunami? Take them all. One one hit. That's it. And because they say he's omnipotent, omniscient. That, you see, this is, this, is, this is the devil. If God, if God, he want to destroy the whole earth, he can destroy it by one word. You know that the flood of Noah is a very clear uh, 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 evidence of that. And uh, yeah. you know, and and the, and the other day I was I was watching, uh, like you know, YouTube sometimes appear for you. I like to watch like sea, ocean, etc. Like now, actually, when I'm talking to you, I have a, right. I have TV, I have a, I have a, a like live camera of a beach. Uh, uh, very nice of you. I like that. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then YouTube give you suggestion like uh, to watch and uh, to su tsunami came uh, yeah. in Japan 
and uh, it was amazing how powerful the ocean is taking the whole city the whole city is carried out in in, yes. less, in less than 60 seconds the city is gone that's so right if god if god is god and allah is supposedly is god why mm. he need the jihad and killing and the bloodshed okay you see you see when when god he take our soul he gave it to us he took it for us took it from us yeah. That's right. And that is happen every day actually because normal death it is we give him back what we've been given before. So that's right. Why Allah don't do his job and take what he gave us? That's it. Why you are going to make war where where madness and rape and crimes and theft and blah blah blah. This is this is devilish. This is not from God. God no, is gonna no, punish no. a nation, he just sent his punishment, and it's very easy. Little little rain and they are gone. Little That's wind, right. little wind, and they are gone. I, are I saw gone. just yesterday a hurricane, a typhoon, hurricane, whatever you call it. Yeah, moving in the speed of 400 miles an hour. You believe it? 400 That's miles, perfect. it can rip out not only the tree, it can rip That's the ground from powerful. the ground. So, so God is powerful, you know. If, if you want to destroy a nation, He can destroy them in, in, in the blink of an eye. What That's this is true. what this about jihad for? Why we want to kill each other? Why what kind of God he says to them? It's not you who slew them, it's it's Allah. And here you see my my topic today. Who yes. is the one is talking in the Quran? It can't be Allah, because if it is Allah, how Allah he says, it is not ye who slew them, it was Allah. If Allah is talking, well, you reminded me exactly about a debate I had with a friend the other time, and the title is Who is Allah? And that was the question I asked first. And then now when they ask me, what about you? Who, is, who do you think Allah is? And I said, uh, Allah is not God. If God is the creator, Allah is Muhammad. That's what I said. And they said, why did you say that? Because, and I said, what? Just read the Quran, read the Quran. If you read the Quran, you will see it is just what Muhammad want that he says. Anything that he says, he gets it. And then he say, Aya came from heaven to me because, and, and everything that is there, the creator of the universe cannot, cannot do that. So I think Allah is just a synonym of Muhammad or Muhammad vice versa. They are just the same. It's just one body. It is one. And, it, is, it is Muhammad creating his own story. In the beginning, by the way, there is many yeah. of the Quran created by Waraq ibn Nufal. This is why oh. we see when Waraq ibn Nufal and Muhammad he tried to commit suicide, and this is additional sign that Muhammad cannot is not even qualified to be a prophet, because a person who is trying to commit suicide obviously he is not stable. That's right. Because a human being who commits suicide, there is reasons for committing suicide. That's true. Someone yeah, he lost. True. Someone he lost hope. Someone he hate life. Someone you can name it. There, there can be many reasons, but all of them they have one sharing reason it's depression depression to yeah. the point no return frustrated yes so when muhammad uh, when 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 the muslims confirmed to us that muhammad when waraq ibn nufal he died he tried mm. to commit suicide many times not once oh. not twice not three times many times but oh. would, when when you ask when you say this to muslim do they believe you they have to it's in front of me you see i never say anything my friend i never say anything without showing the proof and the reference here we go read with me carefully the yes. prophet guys read with me and this is sahih yes. al-bukhari so they cannot say this is weak you know the story the, the the game of weak and fat and it says but after a few days waraka you know, waraka died and the divine inspiration was also post I mean, have you ever heard a God? He stopped sending revelation because a guy he died. Who is this waraka? Nobody. And then for a while, and the prophet became so sad. So we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the of high mountains, and every time he went to the up to the mountain in order to throw himself down, Gabriel would appear be, before him and say, "Oh, Muhammad." Oh, Habibi, what are you doing, Habibi? What are you hmm. doing, Habibi? Are you stupid, Habibi? You are indeed, Habibi, the messenger of Allah. Aye. And then 
the prophet heart became when upon whereupon the prophet heart became a quiet and he would calm down and he would return home and whenever the period of inspiration uh, of coming uh, coming of inspiration used to be long he would do it again which means he go on the top of the mountain again he want to kill himself again wow. is that a behave of a mature man or a kid or a mental person He's, uh, he's depressed and why, he's depressed. why and why why when waraka he died the inspiration stopped the answer is very simple in oh. the same hadith it says that waraka he was uh, translating into arabic what allah allow him to translate from the gospel read it mm. it says here that Waraka was the son of the uh, paternal uncle of her father, brother, who during the pre Islamic period become a Nasara, not a Christian. This is a false translation, which is supposedly yeah. a Christian cult, and used to write an Arabic, the Arabic writing of, and used to, uh, 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 to write the, the gospel in Arabic as much yes. as Allah wished him. That is the Quran. That is the start of the Quran. Uh, can you give me the reference? Uh, it's yeah, very, they, very they, they post it for you in the text already. Just to click in the chat again and you will see it. All right. Okay, I will do yeah. that. So here in you see, way. here you see where, where where Islam is coming from. Waraka, who is the real father of, of Muhammad, and I have the reference in my book before they can read it. And this is why Muhammad is always with Waraka. I mean, you lose Muhammad, you find him with Waraka. Muhammad, when he was a child, he was with Waraka. The sister of Waraka went to sleep with the father of Muhammad. I mean, it's messed up. And obviously, there is no doubt about it that Waraka is the true father of Muhammad. And this, is, this is why the Arab, they say to him, you are the same as a palm tree in the desert, which means you have no root. There's no, you don't have a family. We do not know who, who are you. Who are you? Oh, you know, my, 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 my. Muhammad is not from the family they claim that he is from. You see, if you have my book, you will see that Muhammad is born four years after his father's death. Yes, the book, your book, I've already ordered it. I, I really how, like to buy it. How, yes. how in the world, somebody, he have a son, his wife, she gave birth four years after his, uh, uh, like uh, after the father died. I mean, imagine I die, and now four years from now, my, my, my wife, she claimed that she have a son from a Christian prince. <laughs> that is impossible. That is stupid. That is crazy. So, Muslim books yeah. exposing everything about Muhammad, which is really amazing. And the Muslim, they regret writing those books. Actually, I just saw yesterday that in Egypt, they are asking the highest court in Egypt to they have a case against Al Bukhari. Oh, they have a case right. in, 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 in the court against Al Bukhari. They want to filter Al Bukhari from all the false accusation against the Prophet. But this is Al Bukhari, <laughs> this is the most accurate. This, this is the Sahih, yeah. The Sahih, yeah. The, the authentic but but now, because they are ashamed of this garbage, which is a true garbage, the laundry, the laundry of Islam. Let us filter the laundry, like guys. What you did, you put out the clothes, the underwear of Muhammad on the on, on the on the in the in the balcony. Don't do that. So they are trying, and uh, and Erdogan he did the same. Erdogan every few years they have a conference trying to filter the the Sahih, the Hadith, but they could not yeah. do it because they, if they do that, what is left of Islam? Oh gracious God, this is for how long again are we going to stay in this world of Islam? But I don't know. I don't know how many people are for, are listening to this today because. It's very, very important that they have they listen to you and they know the truth because uh, it's not difficult to understand. That's that's the funny thing is it's it's not difficult to understand when you read with the if you want to know when you read you will understand. That is just what I'm. I don't know. Maybe they are they are profiteering from it. They are getting. They, no, no, they my, are friend, getting my, my friend. My uh, friend. It's very normal for a Muslim when he hear me first time, second time, third time, he will be upset, he will be angry, he will hate me, etc. But after some time, he will notice that this guy is not saying anything. This is it's in front of us on the screen. He's he's not making things up, it's there. So they notice after some time that our problem is not with the Christian prince. The problem is our books, 
the books. And then they will leave Islam. You know, you, you will not believe it. How many are leaving Islam? Those for, from, from watching my videos. So they yeah. leave Islam, but it's very normal in the beginning to refuse, uh, to reject, to attack me, to hate me, to curse me, to pray for my death, blah, 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 blah. This is very normal, but after some time, they will, they will say, they will give up. I have a guy who is a doctor who used to live in England. He opened a chat room in Pal Talk for three years. And the chat room have my name. Christian Prince is the saver, something like that. <laughs> three years attacking me. He speak about nothing except attacking me. After three years, he come to my chat room and he says, everything this guy is saying is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. We thought he is being sarcastic because we know who he is. You know, he's against me like one billion percent. So the people in the, in the chat, they said to him, come to the mic. And they asked me, they sent me a private message and let him talk in the mic. Let's see what he want to say. I said, what yeah. he will say, obviously, he's being sarcastic. There's no way this guy is saying that he, you know. So we gave him the mic and he said, yes, I'm out of Islam. I cannot take it no more. You know, three wow. years, every day, every day, open a chat room to say Christian Prince is a liar. After three years, he decided to leave Islam. And then the Muslim, they accuse him that I paid him $300 uh -oh. to leave Islam. Actually, <laughs> actually, actually, once I went in a chat room. <clears throat> and the Muslim, they said to me, Christian Prince, uh -huh, we have recording of you. <laughs> we know we, we are going to expose you, Christian Prince. I said, what is that? Uh, play it, let us see. He said, we know how you make people leave Islam. I said, how? And and they play my, my voice saying, give me one Muslim, I give you five hamburgers. I was joking, oh, you know. So they oh. are accusing me that Muslims are leaving Islam because I gave each one of them five hamburgers. So I took the mic. I said, are you saying that you Muslims, you exchange God for five hamburger? Do, do, you, do you come to Europe sometimes? I was in Europe just a few months ago. Uh, because you really need to be here because a lot is happening now with the Muslim in our community. No problem, All my friend. Now. Invite me, invite me, and I will be happy actually to be between the, I will the, surely between try the Afri really. African uh, brothers and sisters. I love them. Yes, yes, and, yes, uh, yes, yes. I, 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 I been before in uh, some uh, African churches in England. Actually, they are wonderful, wonderful people. Yes, uh, yes. That's I, rem true. I remember once I went in a Nigerian church. Yes. And I was the only one is not African in the whole church. <laughs> but you will not believe it how much, like, everybody welcomed me. I mean, I did not feel like, okay, I'm, you know, this is look like this is a, an African church. No, 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 no. Yes. Everybody shake hands with me. Everybody give me a hug. Everybody welcome me. They are wonderful, wonderful people. I was so happy. I did maybe not I will tell you, maybe yeah. that I will tell you that that is our weakness. Yes, that is our weakness today because in today's world, this is a weakness. If you are good, you are weak. And no, we, no, my friend. You, if you are good, you are strong. You know, to 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 welcome people and to no, be. It's, this is not weakness. Into, this is into, this is strength. In, in our world today, in our they, world, they today. think they think they think they didn't think what they yeah. think. Yeah, they, they didn't yeah. think what they think. But this is not really weakness. This is this is this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is very very you know. It's very that strong personality. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, and you know, uh, I really love to visit uh, 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 African uh, brothers and sisters churches. Yeah, yeah. Anyone would like to invite me to the uh, any African church? I will. Even, I will really even in Africa, if I can, I would them. love to go. I will. I will do that. I will spread your name all over. No problem. Because we have African community here all over, and uh, I, I am a member of it. So I will really do that because you are very, you are an important person in the world. Thank you, my really, friend. In the world, we are, you are really, you are really. Maybe people don't know, but what you are doing, you are changing the world. And I really appreciate what you are doing, and I really hold, I hold you in my heart. You and and I wish you you don't show yourself to the world really because this is a dangerous world. Yeah. Do what you do. Don't don't bring your, yourself outside because it's a dangerous world. Well, you, yeah, you know, keep... for me, it's not about really. I don't I don't fear danger. Uh, you know, we I, fear I we go... fear we fear for because you are not many people like you are not many. Yeah, but you so see, but you see, but you see uh, the the issue. I I don't uh, like uh, show myself. It, I don't feel yes. comfortable. Like now, I can go anywhere, and I, you know, even having fans saying hello to you is not. Is not fun for me because it's going to be annoying sometime. You know what I mean? That's you will true. never, you will never be uh, by yourself again. That's it. You know, the second you became a public person, that's it. You will never be by yourself. You cannot even drink coffee by yourself because whatever. You, I, I was, I was once in the Philippines. 
and there is a guy in, in the front of me reading the Bible. So I said, let me open a conversation with him in a coffee shop. Yeah. So I start conversation with him. So what are you reading, etc.? And then he said to me, you know, your voice is not strange for me. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I said, I don't know. I mean, I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you, are you Christian Prince? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I and, think I will know your your voice also because I'm so much used to that voice that even if I'm sleeping, I will know you. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then the guy and the guy called his wife and he said to her. And he put him on the speaker, you know. He said, hold, hold on, hold on, let me call my wife. He called his wife and he said to her, you will not believe I am with who? And look what the wife she said. I said, she said, I know. Christian mm. Prince, you give me headache about him. You keep talking about him, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he, said, he said, yes, you will not believe it. He is here. How you know? You know, he wow. said, what? Stop wow. being crazy. You keep talking about him. And she said, he is here. He is now, right now, here in the front of me. Talk, talk, please talk to her. Talk to her. <laughs> that's right. That's right. He said, that's what I'm saying. She is upset from me because I, keep, I really? keep talking about you. Yeah. By now, you should know yourself that you are an important person. You are, to us, to some of us, you are more than a president, you know? Oh, no, because no, no, no. My you friend, are saving the I am, soul of a human being. I am, I am no one. I am, uh, I am just uh, a person trying, well, trying his best. To, uh, to to share That's knowledge true. yeah I, I, yes. know. I am I don't want to be an uh, because anything Islam except Islam just has enslaved a community Islam Islam has made the rest of some some part of us slaves it is an institution <clears throat> and it, that is how I see it Islam is an institution and if you it is like mafia it is you can not come out of it it is so, a mafia if you are able to get out of it through somebody then you should be grateful to that person that's what i'm saying that you are more than some this president who are really killing us and cheating us with their politics you you, you should you should be grateful to you and you should be very you should be knowledgeable about the fact that you are somebody really you are well you know uh you see when there's like when you use a nickname at the end of the day, you are no one because simply you are. It's a nickname. There is no glory come to yes. me at the end of the day, and that yes. makes me feel more blessed because people do not know who is this guy. But yes. uh, but the important is that all of us we make it make a difference. Not only me, because if you guys are not here, carrying my message out, learning and teaching, because you see, life is a is a process of learning and teaching. There's people, there's people who they are selfish who learn but they don't teach. You know, that's true. I am not a selfish person. I learned, and nothing wrong with learning. Life is a process of learning. The person who don't want to learn, he think he know it all. He's a stupid fool. So until now, I'm learning, and I will be learning. And the day I will stop learning, it's mean I'm dead. So that's correct. You don't. If 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 there is somebody listening now, he's like he feel like he is ignorant about uh, uh, something. Well, all of us in somehow somewhere we are ignorant about something. That's very normal. You know, like right. right now, if you if you ask me to uh, to write a letter in English, you might fight. Uh, you know, find like uh, uh, many many words are wrong as a grammar, etc. You know, English is not my first language. I am let us say ignorant, yes. but this is but, normal. But 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 at the same time, you are very good in another language. In another yes, language, what I'm saying that yes. ignorance is part of our life as a human being. That's right. That's right. The important That's is right. that we fight it. You know. That's so right. You don't you don't know something today. You don't stay. You don't know. You fix it. You work in it. You change it. That's correct. You don't stay. Correct. You 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 walk in the street. You fill in a hole. You don't stay in the hole. Says I'm on the hole. You jump and you stand and you get out. And That's then correct. and then if you jump and you get out, fix the hole so nobody be after you will fail in the same hole. And this is what I do. That's correct. You know? That's correct. That's human. That's re that's human. Yeah. That's very human. Uh, that's very human. And uh, really, I'm very, very happy. I, I was not even sure today I will be able to speak to you the way I spoke. And uh, it's very interesting topic. And I think I have voiced out all my feelings with regard to what Islam is. This is the first time I went public and say it. Maybe some of my people will hear my voice and they will know exactly my position in the world today. But well, I don't care anymore, really. I don't care.
Well, thank you very much, my friend, for calling and uh, feel free anytime yeah. to call again and bring more friends. I will call you. And uh, most important, I will let Sandra Solomon get in touch with you. Sure. See you. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you, my friend. You're welcome. Take, take care. Uh, you. Take care. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? I thought it's Abdul, but it turned to be an ex-Abdul, which is wonderful. You see how many ex-Abdul we see every day? Almost every day we have it, a broadcast. We have someone. He, he don't want to be Abdul no more. Actually, Abdul, uh, to be a Abdul is a shame, which means Abdul is Abdullah. And one of the funny things about Muhammad name, the Muslim, they say that his name is Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. Abdullah means the slave of Allah. How his father, his name, the slave of Allah, but you don't believe in Allah. Hello? In the Middle East, when we say Abdullahi Fulan, it's like in English you say, uh, like, you know, when we learn, uh, when I start learning English, they say Mr. Brown and Mr. Mr. White. And I was saying to myself, what's wrong to those English people? Everybody, his last name is, is by color, Mr. Brown and Mr. White. What is that? In the language, there is a phrase you say to someone he is unknown. So in Arabic, and you can ask any Arab, when you say Abdullahi Fulan, Fulan, which means etc., it means it's unknown person. Slave of Allah, unknown. So Muhammad, he was given that name for he is the son of unknown. Nobody knows his father, the real father, except you have to like collect information as I did, and I believe strongly that his real father is Waraq ibn Nufa. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? So when the Abdul, they start posting for me verses about Allah saying, I am God, worship me, my friend, it's not Allah who said that. It is Dahya al-Kalbi. It is a guy, Muhammad, claim that this is Jibreel, but he is a real person in Quraysh, and he is the first one who raped Safiya. He is not an angel. And after he took Safiya, and uh, 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 Muhammad, Muhammad, he have a pimp companion. Khawla ibn uh, Hakim, uh, she is the one, she said to him, why you give him this beautiful girl? Take it for you. So he called for Dahya and he said to him, give me Safiya and go and take other four girls to rape them. Sex a slave. This is not an angel. This is a guy, his name is Dahil Kalbi, and the one is saying that is Muhammad. And I'm telling you, Muslims, think about it. I am so glad, actually, you are lucky that Jibreel did not come in the image of Mr. Trump. Imagine Jibreel, he come and he have a blonde hair, which will Muslims will like him more because very white. Muslims, they are racist. Allah is racist. He love white color, you know, extreme white. The more white you are, the more the more they like you. Uh, 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 th this is why you see the Muslims they make a big deal when somebody is white he convert to Islam but if you are a black person who convert to Islam I mean so what I mean if, just to stay in the back why because this is a racist religion this is a religion of the white this is not a religion for black people this is why even the Quran says the day Faces will turn black and faces will be white. What is behind this? Allah in the judgment day, He will make all the good ones white, all the bad ones black. Finally, I will be black. Finally, my dream will come true. I will be black and I will find a beautiful girlfriend. Finally, Allah Akbar.
يوم تبيض وجوه وتسود وجوه Chapter 3 verse 106 Am I making things up, guys? Hey, Abdul, am I making things up? And the Muslims in their translation, they try to make it like your face will gloom. Your face will look like white. I mean, all kind of fake translation. In Arabic, it says Allah will make faces white and black. Don't play games. We can go right now and read the interpretation and we can see Allah will make them white and black. Especially if you go to the chapter, you know, there's a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of uh, ants I mean imagine even ants have a chapter in the Quran if, you know what if Muhammad he heard about cockroaches he will make a chapter it's called the cockroaches but it look like in Mecca there's no cockroaches because there's it's a dry there's no water you know there's a there's a cockroach of the desert which is different it's not it's not a house cockroach If you go if you go to chapter 27 verse number 82 verse number 82 here we go you will see that there is a beast a beast will come from the ground brothers and sister one of the signs of the judgment day there will be a beast uh, uh, just notification please a, a sister is there ask me a question how the beast will look like first of all he will eye eyebrows of a christian prince and he will have a, his nose as his nails will be like the nails of a Christian prince. I mean, a beast, if you look at this beast, guys, if you see the description of the beast, you will think that Allah, he made, he put all the zoo in the mixer and he hit the mixer and then we have a new animal. It's called al jassasa al jassasa Do we have any Muslim have a comment, have something to say? Any Muslim disagree? Any Muslim agree? Why Muslims? What, what's wrong? Where is the Muslims? If this program run by a woman and she have in her profile a short skirt, you will see the Muslims lined up to call her. Add me, please. Add me, please. I have a camera. All right? Your prophet, he said, the signs of judgment day is six. The sun will come from the west. By the way, I saw a Muslim video speaking about that the earth, the earth, brother, the earth is slowing down by science and they are saying that the earth is slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and to the point one day is going to rotate in the other direction abdul you're a prophet he don't believe the earth is rotating you idiot it is the sun who is moving from point a and to point b so they try to make science fit with fictions, their fictions. How the sun will come from the West? Let us see. We did not forget about a Jassasa and you will be black and white, we will be back. But look how Muhammad explained his stupidity. He said, Who said Muhammad? Who said again Muhammad, not Christian Prince? Because you Muslims claim that I said I did not say anything. Read with me carefully. The Quran confirmed 
that the sun every day sit in the murky water the Muslim they say is trying to fool us saying oh no 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 this is how it appeared that a guy who his name is a Zul Qurnayn, which means that guy with the two horn and why he became that guy with the two horn that name where he got the name from because first time he came to his people to convert them to Islam his people which is a Christian prince people they hit him in the head with the hammer but the sitter a sitter asking question what is the name or what is the meaning of Dulkar name first of all Dulkar name in Arabic mean the man with the two horn I'm sure you never heard of somebody have a two horn except in the cartoon specifically Mickey and Mickey Mouth this person is the Prophet of Allah and one day he went to the people and he told them convert to them and they hit him with the hammer Boing! and he got his fourth horn and he died but Allah the Almighty he rejected him and he came back to life again and he went to the people and he said to them convert to Islam and they hit him with the hammer again Boing! and this is how he got his second horn and he died thank you very much I mean even the story explanation is the most stupid one how they hit him for the second time with the two horn and he died and Allah speaking about him Calling him the guy with the two horn going. If you earn the name with the two horn after you die, then how Allah speak about him in the Quran, calling him the guy of the two horn. I mean madness, man. So the guy with the two horn who is sent by Allah, Allah guided him and gave him the knowledge. He went and he found the sun set in a murky water, and this is what the Quran said. In different hadith, Muhammad, he is getting smarter. Look what Muhammad, he said. Narrated by Abu Dhar, Sahih al-Bukhari. Once I was with the messenger of Allah, the Prophet said, O oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? Here we go. We got now, guys. Is, when you sit with the Prophet Muhammad Baradar, is like you are sitting with NASA, but NASA in big, like with all the knowledge of Allah. Ta -da -da -da, ta -ta 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 -ta. Today our topic is about astronomy, and our best teacher in the universe is a Prophet Muhammad. Who used to teach in the University of Fasa Sasasiko? Okay. Prophet, where the sunset, Prophet? I replied, as always, good student. I replied, Allah and his apostle uh, knows best. I'm so glad he did not say Allah and Dahi al Kalbi knows best. He said with Muhammad, it goes and prostrate underneath Allah throne. Who is the one goes? The, the sun? Muhammad explaining the sunset, claiming that the sun goes. I turn my head up and down. I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around. And all what I can see. The sun moving around me. Man, that is deep. That's really, really, really. I mean, how the prophet he knew this if he is not a prophet? Explain that to me now. How he can say such a thing if he is not a true prophet? 1400 years ago, how he knew this? And the funny, the Muslim, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of videos about science in the Quran. Get my books and laugh at those science because I refuted them. Not only refuted them, I showed you how stupid they are. You know, guys, if I was in the time of Muhammad, I wish I was. At least I can change this religion.
at least I can teach Muhammad some knowledge. I will not claim to be a prophet. I say, hey, so stupid Muhammad. Like, come on, man. You exaggerate too much. The penis is endless. The women are so white to the point they became like a jellyfish we see through their bones. I mean, what kind of a promises you promise us? Women, you can see through her bones. This is disgusting, man. And Nick Muhammad here, he says, which is very important, brother. And Allah, and then he, he quote Allah's statement. He's confirming that this is what happened according to the Quran. Chapter 36, verse number 38, that the sun it runs into a fixed course. The Muslim, they have videos about it saying that the, here, the, 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 the phrase here, the sentence is speaking about the sun based on science will be destroyed or will die as a star blah 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 but this is what it says here Muhammad explain it you see they change the explanation which is their prophet explanation which is supposedly the real meaning meant because remember who is the one who said the Quran Muhammad who are the one that taught the Quran Muhammad who is the one who brought the Quran Muhammad but yet today the Muslims they have different interpretation for the Quran from the interpretation of Muhammad. Why? Just to make it fit with science. How are you, Abu Tablet? How are you? Abu Tablet, he wanna... Why, Abu Tablet, why you don't talk to me? This guy, his name, the father of Tablet. I don't blame you to have a tablet. Allah himself have a tablet. Have you ever heard of a God? He write his book, and he put it between the eyes of an angel. His name is Israfil. And if you ask the Muslims why Allah he wrote his book and he put it between the angel eyes, they say to you, brother, this is from the wisdom of Allah. Number one, he put it between the angel eyes because he don't want the angel to be able to read it, brother. What, what? If we call Zakir Naik now and we ask him, Dr. Zakir Naik. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Brother Zakir Naik, we have a question. Why Allah have a tablet and why he put it between the angel eyes? Okay. First of all, I told you 100 times, don't call me after middle of the night. I'm going to call you and report you to the police. This is sexual harassment. And I know exactly who are you. You are Christian Prince. Secondly, Allah, he put the tablet between the angel eyes because if the angel, he tried to read the book to spy at the Allah book diary, he will have a cross eyes. And nobody will have a cross eyes. And actually, it's impossible. Secondly, Allah, he wrote his book because simply Allah have a bad memory. And don't ever call me again. If you call me again, I will report you for the police. For sexual harassment after the middle of the night. Yeah, he's right. You know, it's like now it's like 5 a.m. in Bangladesh now. Why I'm calling him the guy? The guy is asleep with his four wives. I mean, don't you see the wisdom here? Allah, he write a book and he put it between the eyes of the angel so the angel cannot read the book. What about the other angels? They can stand in the front of the angel. I mean, the first angel. <laughs> So the angel, the guy, the poor guy, Allah, he put the book between his two eyebrows. Why? Because Allah, he don't want him to read the book. Okay, what about the angels walking in front of him? Can they read it? I don't know. I don't know what to say. This is too much. This is really, really, really too much. We go back to al Jassasa. Allah will make us black and white. <sighs> what a crazy cult. I don't know what to talk about. I mean, it's endless. You start talking about one topic, you find yourself talking about a million. And all of them, they are stupid and funny. To make it short here, the prophet of Allah, he will send the beast. A beast will emerge from the earth. And by the way, to, to be honest with you, 
I witnessed those beasts emerging from the earth every day in the Middle East. We have Saddam Hussein, we have the Kong of Jordan, we have the King of Saudi Arabia, we have the Crown Prince. Actually, the beast open branches in all over Europe. You go inside the embassy of a beast to get a stamp, they cut you pieces. Who want to go to Saudi Arabia and apply for a visa? Please don't hesitate. You go right now to the Saudi embassy. You get in, walking in your feet. You don't come out. They cut you pieces. They meet you, uh, kufta, shish kebab, and then they dump you in the sewage. And if somebody asks about you, he say, we did not see him. He did not come here. This is the branch of the beast. The beast branches all over. It's called embassies of the holy Islamic religion. The, the ambassador, when he speaks about the king of Saudi Arabia, he says he's the servant of the sacred mosque. I mean the sacred, when you, you want to hear this, the servant of the sacred mosque. Wah, 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 wah. This is the servant of the sacred mosque. We enter his embassy, he cut us pieces. The guy, he got into the embassy to get a, a stamp to get married. And you are asking me why I don't want to get married? Here we go. What if they ask me to go and get a stamp from Saudi Arabia? Imagine Christian prince in the embassy of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, when you, when you watch the news, it's really funny. You see, the media in the world is divided into two. Two, but both of them, they are made to make money. One is against the Saudi, and one is defending the Saudi. The one is against the Saudi is paid by Qatar. The one who is defending the Saudi is paid by Saudi Arabia, which, which means both of them, they are garbage. But imagine hypocrisy went so far to the point, somebody would say to us, that they send 18 personnel from the intelligence to to convert to to like to convince a guy to come back to Saudi. 18 guys. They send 18 guys. One one of them is the doctor for like what they call them autopsy. What like uh, uh, autopsy? What they call it? So they, they send one, with them a doctor. He cut a human being pieces to convince him to come back to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I'm really convinced. Anyway, so look at the beast. The beast in the Quran, which Allah, Prophet Muhammad, he told us about him. He said, a beast will emerge from the earth and with it will be the staff of Musa and the ring of Solomon. And by the way, this ring, the same ring, appear in the movie. It's called Hoributar. It is the same exact ring. Hoributar, actually, I think, I believe, it's a story like, I mean, the, I accuse, actually, uh, the author of Hori Butar that he stole the copyright story of uh, Prophet Muhammad, which Prophet Muhammad, he stole from the legion of the Jews. The Lord of the Ring? Oof. Man, oh man. I want to have this ring, man. I cannot wait. Truly, truly, I cannot wait. I want to get this ring. I don't know how much it's going to cost me to get this ring. Please, guys, make donation. I want to buy this ring. It's better if a Christian prince got this ring, not Muhammad. Because the first thing Muhammad, if he'd got this ring, he will do, he will order the ring to kill all his mother-in-law. Imagine this guy, you have 13 mother-in-law. Unbelievable. At least. This is amazing. The Lord of the ring is in the Quran. Is in Islam. So this beast is going to come 
to make the story short and he is going to hit you in your nose or forehead depend who you are a believer or disbeliever and after he hit you if you are a disbeliever you will turn totally black and if you are a believer you will turn totally white as you see here it will bring out with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman which means Solomon there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face shining white Takbir, Allahu Akbar, I became white finally Allahu Akbar, victory <laughs> what a stupid religion <laughs> Allah cannot recognize people unless he make them black and white <laughs> hey, uh, uh, all white is in the right and all left is in the in the uh, all uh, black on the left okay and this is how we recognize who is a believer who is a this <laughs> even religion is about race in this cult the white people are the people of god the black people are not in islam and there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will spread in his face to black as a result and then when the people trade with one another in the marketplace they will say how much is this oh believer uh, suppose this is a white guy how you know he's a he's a believer he's a white guy so now you are still you know what what the story is saying this is before judgment day it's not judgment day yet you are going to your work you, you know the beast will come and will hit every one of us the bent in our faith and we will turn to be black and white so we go to work and then what we will say to each other if you are a black i will say to you oh this believer how much do you charge me for this tomato and then you say to me back because supposedly i'm the believer you say to me oh believer because he's a white supposedly the person oh believer this has cost you five dollars how disgusting to teach and to spread in the man kind mentality that all the white people are the good ones and all the black ones is the evil who will go to hell how demonic how satanic how ugly how disgusting and yet they say to us that the prophet he said in the sermon before he died that there's in religion there's no difference between a black and white this sermon is a fabrication Muhammad, he never free his black slaves. Bilal, the Ethiopian, the black man, the Muslim, they say he is the first one to call for the Adhan, Allahu Akbar. He did it because he was a slave. Because the white man, the white Arab man, will not go wake up for him in the morning and do the hard job. They stay asleep. It was the slave guy, the black guy who Muhammad make fun of his look. Muhammad made fun of everyone who don't look a white person the same as the Arab. The funny, the Muslim, they say to you, the Arab are not white. My friend, the Arab are white. Now, for sure, the, 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 the white color, it can be somebody is a blonde, redhead, or it can be a normal Middle Eastern person. The Arab are people from Asia. They are not from Africa and they are not even one nation by the way it's not an ethnic whoever live in the desert but they are not black the only black who was in Arabia is the slaves who they are captured by the Arab and actually the major import of slavery before and now is the Arab specifically Libya Morocco North Africa until now and i spoke about it many times there's tons of thousands of black african slaves in libya they've been raped they've been captured they've been chained and nobody do anything about it 
why because they are African you know poor if you are African rich the whole world will jump for you don't think it's about your color no it's about how much money you have the same as what happened in South Sudan the the the, the Christian in South Sudan they were fighting against Sharia law for like 40 50 years nobody care then Obama he get the news that in South Sudan there's a lot of oil in less than 48 hours 48 hours Obama he established a state it's called the state of South Sudan just because of the oil 48 hours even the guys who are fighting for it they do not know all what they know they have agreement with companies to dig for oil which is obviously paid a lot of money to obama the poor people dying fighting for their freedom and nobody care but the second they get oil obama he care they discovered they have a lot of oil what you can do about that when kuwait was occupied by saddam hussein 63 countries sent their army the whole country of kuwait is not even the size of a village in china i am not exaggerating you can go and search when saddam hussein occupied kuwait all the population of kuwait lived in hotels this is how small it is and the prince of kuwait he paid for the whole period for every hotel which means if i am a kuwaiti citizen i go to the hotel i don't pay for my room the prince of kuwait pay this is how small their population is it was about maybe less than two hundred thousand, and with a lot of money so when saddam hussein took over america wanna go uh, England wanna go, Italy wanna go, France wanna go, Japan wanna send the troops. Everybody wanna send the troops. I mean, everybody in the world because they have a lot of oil. But when two tribes in Africa they were fighting, the Tutsi and the, I, I forgot the other name in Rwanda. If you remember, and almost a million of human beings slaughtered. Billy Clinton, he chose to wage war in Serbia and Europe because the Muslims paid him a lot of money, but he never sent a soldier to stop the mascara for the poor African in Africa. None in the world move. Why? Why they want to move? It's a poor country. Don't think that those people they move do a to a moral reason they are doing business even in your city if you live in a poor area and you call the police the police will come after an hour if you live in a rich area the police will come after one second i mean before before you hang up the police is there The world around us is an evil world. The poor is just number. And if you are a poor, I'm sorry for you. You don't count for them. And Islam is a religion of the rich over the poor. If you remember Muhammad, there is a chapter in the Quran it's called the chapter of Abasa. Anyone remember? chapter of abasa simply simply abasa which means he give him a face he gave him a bad face muhammad a, a blind poor man he came to him and muhammad he gave him a face why he gave him a face why he gave him a face because he was speaking to rich people of Quraysh. This guy is a prophet of God, supposedly. If you are rich, he listen to you. If you are poor, get get lost. Literally, get lost. Even the Muslims, they are not ashamed in the interpretation to say so that Muhammad was busy with rich people of Quraysh when this blind man come to him. 
chapter 74. Actually, it's, sorry, chapter 80, number, uh, chapter 80, verse number one. Let us go to the interpretation. Muhammad is the same as the businessmen of today. Businessmen, they are interest, money, sex. You know, from time to time we have a party in the in the yacht, and we bring a bunch of. Uh, they call them models, but the fact they are hookers. For sex and drugs. That's Muhammad. He, the prophet, found glory with his face and turned away. To who? What is the interpretation for this stupid thing? For the blind man, when he come to him, and he was busy with the rich men of Quraysh, because the blind man came into him, when Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, this is the name of the blind man, came to him and his real name, Abdullah ibn etc. ibn Maktoub, was his father, mother, blah, 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 okay? Happened that is the Prophet was sitting with the group of men among the nobles of Quraysh. Do you see it? Do you see it? The nobles. My friend, if you are not from the nobles, even those who claim to be prophets of God, they have no time for you. Do you see it? That is the word of the devil. You are not from the noble. Muhammad, he have no time for you. You are not rich. You are no one. And this guy, not only he is poor, he is blind in the top of that. So he have a double situation. And then people, they start speaking about Muhammad, about how bad his ethic is. How dare you to do that to a blind man? So Muhammad, he made a verse saying, Allah, he told me this. How you do that? How you do that? Are you saying to me, Allah, that Muhammad, he have a bad ethic? And you choose him to be the prophet of God? I mean, is it, is it something I need to be told by God that I should not do that to a blind man? How, how filthy he is to the point he was bad to a blind man. You see, when, when you, uh, 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 when you see one of those people who have any kind of, uh, uh, let us say, situation, I don't want to call it disability, it's situation, they are born with something. Your heart break for them to help them. How you turn, how how you how you turn away from them? Imagine there's a blind man, he is going to cross the street and he might get killed. And you are speaking to a noble person. Let the blind man die. Why you want to care, right? Muhammad was sitting with a bunch of noble persons who they are extremely filthy rich. A blind man he come. What Muhammad will lose if Muhammad he answered the blind man? In the front of those noble. Let him come. The noble people are coming and this blind man he is there. But Muhammad, look how evil he is. He said to himself, if I spoke to him, those noble, they will say, look who is following him. Look at the savage they are going to talk to him. Look at the savage he is talking to. Muhammad is an evil man. A good man, he will never do that. Do we have any Muslim caller? So again, we could not get any answer to tell from Muslims to tell us how the Muslims believe that Allah, he told Muhammad, when there's no proof that Muhammad ever spoke to Allah. Muhammad, he spoke to a guy, his name is Dahil Kalbi. 
Muhammad, he witnessed for that. The Muslims approved that, and he did not speak to an angel. An angel, he come in the look of a guy who lived next door. That is a bad story. I advise you Muslims to change the name of the angel from Jibreel to Dahil Kalbi and from Dahil Kalbi to Trump. Imagine if Allah sent his angel in the form and the shape of a Trump. So now how we will know who is a Trump and who is the angel? What kind of God he would do that? Sending his angel in the look of someone who live in town. He live in town. Which will make the people confused about who is this guy and who is this guy because now we have two Dahil Kalbi. One is Jibreel, the real Jibreel, and the other one is the real Dahil Kalbi. So the conclusion, my friend, there's nowhere, there's no proof that Allah even spoke to Muhammad once. Not only he did not say, worship me, it is Muhammad who said that Dahil Kalbi, he said, which is Jibreel supposedly he said that Allah he said so after all that he said they say it's Allah who said but Muhammad he have no proof that Allah said that to him especially if we knew that Muhammad he have a mental issue and this is proven from the Islamic books that this person he imagined things happening so how we can guarantee that he saw even a guy he looked like Dahil Kalbi If you remember, look what Aisha she said. Once the prophet was bewitched, so that he began imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. How we can trust a guy? The Muslim they believe he is the bewitched prophet. When you say he was bewitched, you just admitted that he was controlled by the devil. Your prophet was under the devil. This is what you just said, bewitched. The prophet was bewitched. It's not me who's saying that, it's you. The prophet was bewitched. And what happened after he was bewitched? Explain. He start imagining that he's done thing. In fact, he did not done. He had not done. What does that mean? The prophet, maybe he saw now an angel, but in fact, he saw no angel. The prophet, he saw himself having sex, but in fact, he did not have sex. It was the goat. The prophet, he saw, he, he you know, he thought he ate zucchini, but in the fact, it was not zucchini. It was his finger. What does that mean? This is very dangerous. We have a prophet who lost his conscience and he do not know what's happening around him. He is a delusional and he is living an illusion. He do not know what he is doing and what happened. This is why there is a movie. I would like all of you to watch it. It's called The Perfect Host. How many of you watch it? How many of you saw this movie? The Perfect Host. Go and watch The Perfect Host. It is exactly Muhammad's story. When I was in Germany, you know, uh, uh, you know, we sat with the, some brothers from, from Germany, and uh, I told them, you should watch this movie. It's about Muhammad. They said, but this is an American movie. What, what's about Muhammad? I said, just watch it and you will see. So in the beginning, they did not understand why I'm saying it's about Muhammad until the end. Watch it and see. It is Muhammad's story. It's about, about a guy. He imagined people around him dining, even having sex. He have a mental illusion. He's, he's, he's mental. He sent himself postcards, letters. This is Muhammad. He had people sitting with him and eating with him. Muhammad, he told them that Jibreel was eating with him. He saw people having sex. In the front of him, and he himself was having sex, but in fact, there's nobody. And this is exactly what happened with Muhammad. 
if you go in different hadith, it says, Read with me. The Prophet continued for such and such period, imagine that he had slept and had sexual interrelation, which means sexual intercourse, with his wives, but in fact he did not. Did you see it? Wasn't the Jew who killed Muhammad a family that Muhammad has slaughtered earlier? Yeah, but you know, the Shia, uh, they believe that the one who killed Muhammad really, it was Aisha. Do you see here where it says? The Prophet continued for such and such a period of time imagining that he had sexual relationship with his wives. In fact, he did not. How that can be a prophet of God? He don't even he is not sure even if his sex was real or not. How he can be sure that the angel he see is a real or fiction too? When you reach the point that you imagine yourself having sex with all your wives, you have thirteen wives. Yet he did not. I mean, how bad the situation is. How horrible the situation of Muhammad. Yeah, the Shia, they believe that the one who killed Muhammad, it was Aisha and Hafsa. They poisoned him. Muhammad, he claimed that it is the poison he ate from the food he ate at Khaybar. But it is possible that Aisha and Hafsa killed him too. Remember, those those uh, Islam is based on uh, uh, conspiracy and killing each other. Uh, Muhammad was killed, then the Caliphate who 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 made Islam is stable. Uh, uh, Uthman, the one who Muslim, they are reading his his Quran. The Muslim not only they killed him. When he was alive, they tortured him and they took his beard hair one by one. And after that, they cut his head and they play with it billy ball. And after that, they drag his body in the street as if he's a dog. And after that, they refused to bury him. They left him in the street. And after that, a group of Muslims, they felt sorry for him. So they took him, they stole his body from the street so nobody see them. And then they buried him secretly in the Jewish graveyard the history of islam all of it about murdering each other aisha she took an army to kill ali and she killed more than ten thousand muslims go and read ali children of ali the descendant of muhammad as they called them they were slaughtered by muslims and they made fun of their body they cut them pieces Wasn't the Jew who killed Muhammad a family that Muhammad has slaughtered earlier? David, no, this is wrong. The one who killed Muhammad, according to Muhammad, is a Jew. It's a Jewish woman from the tribe of Khaybar. That's not true. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Muhammad, he say, you see it? The prophet in the Aisha, she said, the prophet in his element which he died, he used to say, oh Aisha, I feel the pain which I caused by the food I ate at Khaybar. Khaybar is a Jewish tribe, period. So I don't know who told you that. 
I don't care people they can say whatever they want they want but here we say things with confirmation so Muhammad he think it was the poison of the Jewish women the Shia they think it was Aisha, Aisha and Hafsa they are the one who killed Muhammad so their family can inherit and take over the business Uh, we have a guy, his name is Alexander uh, Letami. Come to, to Islam TV. My friend, why you don't call me? Islam TV is here. I have Zakir Naik here. Look what this guy is saying, guys. Hold on, hold on. Look what this guy is saying. <clears throat> Let us see who is the coward. I want you to give me an ID of the Islamic TV and I will call right now. Are you there, Alexander? Can you give me the ID of your Islamic TV? There is Skype. I will call them right now. Let us see. Let us see who is the coward. Can you do so? Ah, this is sorry. Sorry, somebody. Somebody is asking uh, Islam TV. Sorry, I thought this is a Muslim. <laughs> All right. What is the guy? His name is. Uh, where is the guy he posted first? Hold on. Islam, Jihad, TV, whatever. I look like I miss it. Yeah, this guy is, is just quoting him. Where is the Muslims who, I mean, you see the Muslims, they want to they wanna, they wanna challenge me. They ask me to go and debate and etc. But they don't want, they will not let me call them. They will not call me. I tried many times to call the Dean show. They never let me go through. You see the D show, one of the funny things about this Islamic TV station, which is the most funny corrupt station, they say to you, if you have a question, please call us. This is our phone number. All right. Then you call. They will not let you go through. But this guy is receiving phone calls from who? Nobody. It's the same as Muhammad. Imagine. You see this guy, Yusuf State. He have a cell phone. Have you ever heard of a TV? They have, they receive phone calls by cell phone. And then he answered the phone, but the phone did not even ring. He put it in his head. Hello? Yes, brother. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I will answer you right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, 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 but nobody's talking. It's a fake show. We never heard of a person calling and we heard the voice of the caller. I mean, why you don't put the voice of the caller in the, in the TV so we can hear him? Because simply nobody is calling. The guy he is fabricating a show that there's callers and he is going to answer them. Hello? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh huh. Oh, you are saying so why you Muslims uh, hate Christians? This is your question. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. This, this question made by him. You know, he want to make it as a Christian. He called to ask this question. Why you don't make the Christian who is in the phone, his voice come? Let us hear him. Because there's nobody. And when I try to call them, they never let me go through. The same as this guy, you know, all of them, they are fake and they are fabricated. They want to debate everybody, but the second they see somebody can beat the heck of them, they don't want to talk to him. Like the guy from Pakistan. He was a challenging Christians to debate him. And when I called him, the potato, he ran away. Let us see. Brand. Let us see the video. So, so this is the guy he keep calling he wanna he wanna debate the Christians. But they, he will, he, in the second he, he knows me. Don't, don't, you're doing right now. Don't you want to debate? So don't you want to so Don't Look, you, listen. I, I'm ready to debate everyone, but this is not 
your 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 method is not a pretty formal debate. Why not? You are hiding in your room. You are hiding in your room. You don't want to tell me your religion. You don't want me to tell your name. You don't want to to be seen. You are coward, man. You are coward. Why don't you want to debate Christian Prince? Yeah, yeah. Show me your face. Why? Show me your face. Give me your name. Christian. Huh? Don't, you don't want to. See, see, you, you want you want to be known by people. That's why you want to debate me, and you accuse me of a lot of bad things. Guys. I want to be known by people, so this is why I want to be, this guy. Nobody know him. He's a Filipino guy. Nobody heard of him, and he is saying, "I want to debate him to be known." <laughs> if you're a Christian, you stupid. You just said, "I don't see my face. I don't know my real name." So what? What do you mean that to be known? I mean, how stupid that is. What is the point to be known if nobody know who you are? If you are Christian, if you're a good Christian. You will be, you do you will not be like this. Mm. You accuse me a lot of You see, guys, look what the Muslims do. The Muslims, they make fun of you for being a Christian 24 hours, seven days a week. The second you start spanking them, they say to you, you are not a good Christian. Thanks. Why? I'm not doing this for money, my brand. How come you accuse me of everything? Nobody accusing you nothing. Do you, you want to debate? Yeah, no, no, you accuse me. I, I read, I read. I, Someone send me your your uh, message. Hmm? What, why didn't you, you answer? Me of, hmm? Why didn't you answer? How can I? But how can I? Look, so look, look, look. I have debated an American here. You want to? You want to see it? I'm not. I debated a true American. A true American. Born American. Born American. Huh? Unlike you, you're not American. <laughs> See, Muslims are racist wherever they go. This is a Filipino guy. He is saying he debated a true American. So if a Christian prince is not a true American, I will not debate him. American, I debated a real American. Yes, I swear by Allah, a real, real American, brother. Are you sure? It was real, real American? Yes, brother. I Even I saw his passport. <laughs> A real, real American. Christian Prince is not real American. I mean, imagine the guy, he's big. He's big to the point he debated a real American. American. Huh? Unlike you, you're not American. I, 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 because you have, an, you have an accent. You have an accent? Well, why, why don't you want to debate <laughs> look, Christian look, Prince? I, I will debate you. My condition is I want to see your ugly face first. I want to see your name. I want to know your name. We will arrange everything. I debated. I, I will, many. There are at least three times I experienced in Palto. Okay. Okay. You, you give me your. You show me your face. Christian Prince. Give me your face. Christian. Give me your face. We will arrange it. Give me your face and show me your name. Are you getting this? Thing? This is how nervous he is. <laughs> give me your face and show me your name. So, we will. I will ask the brothers here from Salam TV to arrange everything. Don't dictate me. Who are you, by the way? You have no experience in the debate. The people they don't. I have no experience in debate. <laughs> I mean, that's it. What I can say, guys. I mean, you have no experience in debate, Christian Prince. Give me your face and show me your name. <laughs> All the excuses in the world, suddenly they are there, not, to, not just to debate me. Instead of doing blah, blah, blah for 20 minutes on the phone, what about we do it right now? All the excusing, excuse. They are all over. Do we have any Muslim one that would like to call us? Where Allah, he said, I am God, worship me. All what you have is Muhammad saying, that Dahil Kalbi saying, that Jibreel saying, that Allah said. You don't have Allah said. You have many people saying, and there's no proof of anything. 
So how you Muslims follow this cult? Any Muslim would like to call? <coughs> Anyone? The problem if I show my face, not only I will lose the Muslims, I will lose the Christians too. They will get scared. This is one of the reasons I'm not showing my face. It's just for your benefit. Like the second I open the camera now, like what? I have a 300 people watching? It's going to be like eight. And the eight who stay, they are a blind one. Who is Abdul is going to call me? Hello? Hello? It's very embarrassing, very embarrassing to be a Muslim, very embarrassing. We are Muslims, we believe in God, and God will make our penis very endless, very beautiful. And all my life, I wanted to have an endless penis. Brother, imagine, brother, you're, you're, you, live, you live in New York, but your penis in the Galaxy 7, and James Bond is walking over your penis. And not only that, maybe some uh, very big oil companies, they will sign an agreement to use your penis as a cable uh, for the internet or even cable for oil. Is it fantastic, brother, to have a God who increases the size of your penis? I think this is very fantastic, and this is because Allah, he loves our penis. And he have a very special interest. You see, brother, Every God have a special interest, and our God, Allah, He have a special, very special interest in our sexual organ. To the point, He want to be sure that our penis is very long, very long, very long, and it's very, very functional. Uh, by the way, I'm very concerned about having an endless penis, because if my wife is next to me, how I can have zigs with her? Do we have any Abdul who explain to us why Allah is so much interested in the sexual organ penises and the uh, vagina? The Muslim men will have uh, will have eighty thousand women, which means eighty thousand vagina. I don't like to have a vagina. I used to watch a series called the Virgini. Hello. <clears throat> What, what what happened to the Muslims? Why why your God is so much interested in rewarding you through your sexual organs? What is the secret behind that? I mean, this is God and this is a penis. What is the connection between your God and, and your penis? You pray to God, you fast for God, you die for God, you do jihad for God, you kill for God, and then Allah, He do what? He reward your penis. Hello? Allah, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful because you are going to increase the size of our penis. Other gods, they don't do that. You are the only true God who can increase penises. And there is some doctors, actually, they can do that, but not to the size you are offering. It's simply too. Additional to that, it's for free. <clears throat> do we have any Abdul when I call us? Or you are ashamed of such a religion. Hello? Muhammad, he don't hate women, my friend. Muhammad, he like to control women. Muhammad, he like to abuse women. He don't hate them. He have too many of them. He like to have sex with them. He have to like to play with them, especially the young ones. Uh, but for sure, he take advantage of the weakness, the physical weakness of the females. But one or one additional reason, Muhammad, he uh, he wanted additional control because he was married to Khadija, who was a lot older than him, and she was very rich, and he was working for her. So for many years, 
Muhammad was under her command so finally Muhammad he is free he took her money and now he will not be the man of the house <coughs> Quran secret I think this guy he called me before right no I want to I want to call uh, uh, if they have a TV program they have a Skype I would call them otherwise I prefer if Muslims call me because you see if you call them and then you broadcast if they don't want to be in the in the in the show they will claim that you are invading their privacy privacy and uh, recording them so I prefer if they call I will call a Muslim if he try to call me and he drop then I call him do we have any Abdul <clears throat> anyone All right, guys, look like we have no Muslim to answer us. Where Allah, he said, I am God, worship me. Or what they have, they have a guy. His name is Dahil Kalbi. Muhammad, he claimed that he is the angel Jibreel. But the fact he is a guy who live in Mecca. He's a man, very good looking. He is the first one who raped Safiya after Muhammad, he killed her family. Then Muhammad, he took Safiya from him and he raped her after. He is a real person. A human being who is from the tribe of Quraysh who Muhammad opened his door for him 24 hours seven days a week to the point that Aisha she was wondering what is the relationship what's going on between him and this guy Dahya but yet Dahya yet Muhammad to cover his relationship sexual relationship with this man he claimed that this guy who come to him anytime he wish even in the middle of the night and he never said to him no and he stayed with him long long time more than he stay with his wives he claimed that this is the angel gabriel this is what we have and muslims have no answer i want to say thank you guys for being here i think we have enough for today i will try not tomorrow uh, it's let's see maybe tomorrow i'm not sure uh, just subscribe please uh, to be in touch maybe we'll do it tomorrow at the same time 3 3 30 or maybe the day after we will see so until then i say thank you very much for being here and i hope next time we will find some muslim abdul who they are willing to call us and prove to us that islam have any base all what we see is just a mad man religion based on sexuality and temptation and food heaven full of food birds they will become barbecue grape wine river river of sperm will be given to the prophet penises will never go soft and vagina fit for those penises who they are so huge to the point they are endless that is the summary of this cult it's called islam and there's no way it is from god to believe in god you should believe that god is at least noble you see, we say there is a noble person. So, what about God? He is not noble. Noble person, he will not bring you to his house and he offer you a lot of naked women and, excuse my language, their legs is open. That is not a noble person. So, how about the noble God? He bring you to his house and he offer you 80,000 women who their panties is off and their legs is up. Excuse my language. I try to make it as it is This is the fact. This is the truth That cannot be God If there is in this earth human we call them noble and we when we mean noble we don't mean rich We mean they have nobility. They are good They are high class They are trustworthy They are decent a decent man. He will not offer you 80,000 women to sleep with them he will not do that that is not a decent promise and this is a very clear evidence that muhammad 
he don't have a decent God. He have nothing but the devil. You want to learn what decency mean? Go and read the words of Jesus the Christ. You want to learn what noble to be? Go and see who is the Messiah. You want to learn what the miracle mean? Go and see the power of the Messiah. You want to see the wisdom mean? Go and study every word the Messiah he said. You want to learn? How to be a human being loving giving go and listen to the words of Christ that is noble that is amazing and that is a beautiful God teach love not hate which we cannot find in Islam which is additional reason to make us sure that Islam is nothing but satanic Satan God provide nothing but satanic ethic. Ethic is not exist in Islam. A prophet of God who have no problem to have sexual relationship with the child, he have no ethic. A man at the age of 54, he have a desire of sex to a child at the age of six he cannot be a prophet of God Muhammad is not a child molester Muhammad is a pedophile child molester is somebody molest children pedophile is different Muhammad even he tried to seduce his men to have sex with the children instead of having sex with women and we can show you the reference right now how that can be a prophet of God Jesus said it's better for the one who heard the little one to put a milestone in his neck and throw himself in the deep ocean that is Jesus teaching while Jesus teaching us that if you are a child molester who heard the little one it's better for you to throw yourself in the deep ocean Muhammad was doing it. Muhammad is no different from those child molester we hear them about in some churches. They are following Muhammad. Those people of the devil, they wear the uniform of a priest, but in fact, they are Muhammad himself. In different time, in different name, in different title. The devil here in you himself, with names and titles. He come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but in fact, he is a wolf. And this is what my Lord taught me. So you have to be vigilant and you have to be sure that the one you are talking to and the one you talking to you is not a wolf. And don't be fooled by the uniform they wear. People, they can dress themselves wherever they want, but what is inside is different. So be aware, my friend. And education is a must in order to survive this evil time we live in. Evil is all around us, and evil have names. But the names of the evil today, he tried to make it look good names. Today, everything evil have a good name. Lying, they call it politics. Cheating. They call it, I am not happy with my wife. Sleeping around, they call it fun. I mean, everything, everything around you, people do, they give it a name which make it look nicer. And this is what Islam does. Islam make adultery, muta. Prostitution is a permitted in Islam. Big deal. As long you are using your sex slaves for prostitution. So, 
let us always use one uh, uh, important phrase of the Messiah to judge things around us. He said, from their fruits, you shall know them. When you go, when you want to do, you want to decide anything around you, have to do with relations with others. Believe, believe in a system or believe in religion. Always examine things. Examine the spirit and the ethic of the fruit from their fruits, not from their names. People, they can give themselves a good name. They can make themselves a charity organization, but in fact, they are trafficking a human being, children. It can be anything. Satan, he colors himself in many colors. In the beach, he is like sand. In the mountain, he is a rock. In the green, he's a green. He changed his color, he changed his name, he changed his look, he changed the bent in what he needs to change. So don't be fooled by what do you see. Sometimes even our eyes fool us and we believe them. But there is something it's called mirage. It's true. We see it. It's true. We recognize it. But it's not true, it's not exist. And that what Satan he tried to do to you, like Muhammad. He created a mirage in the front of your eyes to make you believe that there is virgins in the cross of the street waiting for you. So you keep walking, hoping to get there. And the more you walk, they walk away. The more you get to close, they step away. You step 10 meters, they step 10 meters back. It's an endless journey, so the devil, he can take you away from where you belong. Be careful, and may the Lord bless you all. And with this, we say Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And I will see you again. Good night. Good day, everybody. Take care.